Hello, and welcome to the 13th episode of the Talos Principle. We went through level 4 last episode, and unfortunately, I am unable to go back far enough to before I collected this sigil, but I will be showing you how to get it all the same. When you walk out, Elohim will congratulate you on getting through to this far and how you should be proud of being his creation or whatever. Here, Sheep talks about how everything tells him not to go to the tower, but everything says he must. Then somebody wonders who's right and who's wrong, and then Sheep thinks he's putting too much stock into what Milton says. I will pause. You pause the video and read. As you can see, I'm a bit impatient at the moment. This is what? The sixth time I've done this? I'm starting to think that setting up a specific subject in the previous episode to do in the current is a bad idea, and that idea will be dropped following this episode. There is one more terminal to go through back here. just go and do that level now so we know exactly which level I've already done and don't have to worry about it in the future. The subject for today, as I've mentioned in the previous episode, is on optimal morality. Here's an ethical dilemma you probably heard. Let's say that there is a runaway trolley, and it runs the risk of running over five particularly stupid people who decided it would be a good idea to stand on the tracks. You are standing by a lever that will let you reroute the trolley to a different set of tracks, where only one idiot is having his the time of his life standing on the tracks. Would you do it? Some people would probably say yes. The life of one person is worth less than the life of five. Others might object, saying that they don't feel as if they should be the arbiter lives and who dies. Both answers are well and good, but did any of you think to remotely access the trolley and then you collect it here? Remotely access a trolley with your mind? Turn on the thrusters underneath which will lift it up over the heads of these stupid people? and thus preventing a disaster altogether? Probably not. Let's have a different issue. Let's say that there was a fire and one of your caveman buddies was badly burned. Of 
course, uh, he's dying and won't last very long. So do you beat him to death with your club and end his suffering now? Or do you decide to take a passive approach and just let him die on his own natural terms? As much of a natural set of terms as you can let him. I'm sure none of you have decided to go to the hospital and have a particularly skilled surgeon heal up your buddy. You can probably see the error in this reasoning. The fact of the matter that These options just don't exist yet. Being able to remotely access trolleys with your mind and have them fly above people isn't a thing now, and hospitals weren't a thing in caveman days. And that, I think, is the big issue with the concept of an objective morality. It simply does not take into account possible solutions that would arise in the future. It's a very common line of thinking in religious circles that their holy books are the perfect set of rules for all time, no matter what. And this is probably the highest our robot protagonist has ever been in any of these levels. How scenic. This, of course, leads to many conflicts within modern day. Things like, should gay marriage be considered criminal in any way? Some of the more orthodox members of religions, such as really orthodox Jews, would seem even crazy with the kind of laws they are so dedicated to following. In Bill Maher's documentary, Religionless, he talks to a guy who takes the most strict and serious and literal approach to not working on the Sabbath as he possibly could, coming up with all these different loopholes just for the sake of keeping this rule alive and continuing to follow it. This thinking holds back humanity. Things change. What might have been necessary evils in the past are no longer in the future. I've mentioned before that even the best possible morality for a time might seem utterly abhorrent today. How should you treat your slaves? Should you treat them well and give them ample amounts of food and comforts and utilities that they need to live even semi-comfortably? Well, today you're not supposed to own slaves at all. That old morality is no longer a viable option. I don't think this is a bad thing by any means. It simply means we're progressing. But I think it also... Let me use a different example here. 
one debate within the U.S. is on uh, how much liberty the government has when it comes to surveying people online. The Constitution forbids the government from searching your home without a warrant, but the Founding Fathers who wrote the Constitution could not anticipate the creation of the debate is on gun control. The government understood that citizens should be able to fend for themselves against a tyrannical government. If the government ever went out of line and started to subjugate the citizens, the citizens should be able to fight back. However, as proponents of gun control would point out, Back then, fighting was actually viable. Guns back then were these crappy little muskets that took like a minute to reload. The Founding Fathers simply didn't anticipate the existence of some psychopath getting an AK-47 and shooting up a school. So, should there be laws concerning gun control, limiting... Limiting what kind of guns people can and cannot buy because they've become so advanced? Even the intentional purpose of allowing citizens to have guns seems pretty ludicrous. If the government really did want to subjugate the citizenry, they have weapons that are even better than the weapons we're able to access right now. A bunch of people fighting a back against the government with their AK-47s, their assault rifles, their pistols, whatever. The government and by extension the military, some guy can sit down in some base somewhere and accurately direct a drone to just bomb whatever militia is going to stand up against the tyranny. There's a lot of nuance to this debate and I'm not going to state any particular position one way or another, but I'm sure you can probably guess what my position might be based on what I've said here. But it is something to think about. Now to the Founding Fathers' credit, they were smart enough to understand that the Constitution should be a living document and that it's there to be changed. It's there to be updated. Times change and so must the laws. But that's not the case with holy books. The only time religions change is if there is such a ridiculous, overwhelming opinion against or for something, like the Catholic Church's revised stance on purgatory where unbaptized babies uh, are no longer regulated to just purgatory but they get to go to heaven because it seemed unnecessarily cruel for them not to be able to. In 
and also a lot of the more liberal sects of religions are opening their minds towards, say, homosexual marriage. Alternatively, religions can change when an entire new sect or even an entire new religion crops up. There's multiple different major Abrahamic faiths, the big three, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and then there's different denominations with them, Catholicism and Protestantism, Mormonism, Orthodox and Tadistic Judaism, Sunni and Shiite Islam, and the reason for these split-offs is well, partly because the founders of these split-offs wanted more power for themselves, but also because there's disagreement on what the laws should be and what the ones that are already written should mean. We keep our morality exactly the same until the end of time, we're just going to keep making the same mistakes over and over again. There should be no sacred cows when it comes to what we are and are not allowed to do. What we think we ought to do should be based on what we know, what we learn, what we experience, and what we can emphasize with Examine the history of various places and people, read up on various philosophies and what some of the brightest humans who have ever walked the earth have mentioned. Critically examine your own position and what the world around you is like, and try to put yourself in someone else's shoes for a while. And with all that together, try to figure out what you think is right and wrong. Now, it could very well be that you, a lot of what you'll end up figuring out is exactly what the rest of society thinks is right and wrong. You'll probably come to the conclusion that you shouldn't go around stabbing random people because it's very inconsiderate and you wouldn't want random people running around and stabbing you. But I would encourage you to realize this by your own volition, by actually thinking about this issue and other ones. Other ones that are a lot more complicated than I don't like people running around stabbing each other. Then simply listening to a politician, a priest, a parent, or a professor. professor And if you do come to a conclusion about what you think the perfect ideal society should be, if you listen to nothing else I've said on morality, at least consider this. When forming your own perfect society based on your figured out morality, I see exactly, exactly what she, the shepherd is saying here. When coming up with your own little perfect society, I'd encourage you to perform this little thought experiment. Let's say you're a traveler with nothing to your name who has just arrived. You have no money, you have no connections. As far as you're concerned, you didn't even exist prior to walking into this civilization governed by your own perfect ideal morality. How well would you fare? realistically with how human nature is. Would you be able to live well enough to get all the base necessities? Would you be able to even thrive in your civilization? Asking questions like that is I think what separates a society that functions and thrives well 
versus ones that turn into despotic hellholes. But as said before, these are things that I want you to figure out for yourself. Read up on as much as you can, see what everyone else has to say, and have fun on your little journey towards self-actualization or whatever. exactly clear if he's answering it yes or not. I'm assuming that my question was about Milton, the sassy AI who doesn't actually have any arguments against my position. I think we're plugged into some kind of machine. Well, I'd agree with you. On top of the fact that I'm literally playing a video game on a machine for the purpose of my robot character here, everything here acts like a hologram. But what, why do you think this? the previous messages and all the people talking about how they're going to die and how they're either okay with it or not and what they want to do before they die I think something has gone badly wrong Let's hear it. Hello, Milton. Hello, Milton. Well, that was enlightening. And we can read some of the stuff we've already read, but let us not. So that concludes this episode. Finally. I, I legit want to say I've re-recorded this like eight times. And because of how the uh, previous session loading is done, I usually try to go back to like the end of the last level, but I was unable to do so here and ended up having I think this one completed and unable to go back before that. So I do apologize for that. I don't know if there's anything I could have done there. The last checkpoints just wouldn't go back far enough. It's... It was a bit of a crappy day all around, but... I said what I wanted, wanted to say on the matter. I hope I made you think a little bit and entertained you all the same. One last view from above. More of these stages should have really high views like this. It's such a beautiful scenery. Seeing all these different puzzles from a different angle like this. Reminds me a bit of those isometric games. Like this one right here. This is an isometric view. Next episode, I think, will be a little better. 
I said before, I come to realize that declaring outright what the next subject would be in an episode and then trying to commit to it in the next one might not be the best course of action, especially when you're unable to think of a subject to commit to while going through the episode. So instead, I'll just uh, bid this level farewell. We're able to go to the next world, but of course there's still two more levels to explore in this area. We still have no means to get through these wooden boards, and I want to explore the star areas at the end of it all. left to say. I hope you enjoyed the episode and take care.